Last week, Daryl and Jesse fitted the 75 mm gun. Now that it's secure and out of the way, they can begin work on the engine and drive line. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Originally, this model of Grand Tank would have had two inline six cylinder Detroit diesel engines. We've managed to acquire this two stroke Detroit diesel 8V71T. Its V configured turbocharged eight cylinders can produce about 400 horsepower and 1,000 foot pounds of torque. It's a really powerful engine and it's used in large heavy machinery and military vehicles like the M110 self propelled howitzer. The boys have to carefully drop it into position and then make up the mounts for it. We're trapped by the forklift on how much movement we've got. We're going to set it up inside there now, chock it up, and swap the, the forklift for the gantry. And that a bit way, more manoeuvrable. Yeah, a bit more manoeuvrable. We can get lifted up because we, we won't be taking it in and out too many more times. The forklift just gives us enough height to get it in and out. We're just going down to take the weight. It's just so we can get the gantry on. I just need something to make up 300. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, the blue one, all right, back on the other side, that one there. Ooh, Hang on, we got, we got a... We got an issue. We got a malfunction. Oh, no, sorted. A chain malfunction. <laughs> Just pass it up the chain. Front one. No, no, the front no. one. Oh, front. Front of the, the tank. The out, your other front. Sorry. We're a little bit out of whack over. The next day, the boys started on the mounts. It's only little. It's not like six meters long. It's only little. It's only little. It's Yeah, okay. So when, when I make these, you can we'll, we'll pull the engine out then. This way, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. That'll be firm because it's opposite that it's a bit of rubber on the back wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we do have to come over though. Remember, we've got to bring it over. Yeah, no, I've already, I've already got most of it over. Is it pretty level? Can you, can you get your eye through there and have a look? You got him? Lou, 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 Lucy, Lucy. That's his brand new thrill. So what's next? Oh, Jess is making up, uh, we'll bolt this to that flange. He's We've just got to elongate a couple of holes here. We measured everything pretty carefully, but of course, after we dropped the engine in, we found it needed a little bit of persuading to allow it to fit properly.
done. Alright, leave it there. Alright, all clear? Yep. One mil. What's one mil between friends? We've just cut these bits of flat bar and we've chamfered them. So when we put the motor in later, it's just going to help locate it. Just because when we've got it on the gantry on the A-frame, it just wants to go everywhere. The engine wants to spin and go forward and back. So th these are just going to help us locate it in the future. Yeah. This is the Allison Detroit automatic gearbox that came with the engine. It may seem strange, especially to our US viewers, but coming across clutches, engines and gearboxes to suit setups like this in our town is not easy at all. If there's something out there that is close to working that becomes available to us, we usually have no choice but to just go with it. I know that sounds a bit strange coming from an organisation that builds and imports rare tanks for a museum, but that's just the reality of it. We tried to get a manual gearbox, which would have been a bit easier to set up, but the time frame we allowed for the build could not allow us to source one in time. So we made the decision just to make this one work. At first, we were a little bit concerned that it would push too much power into the existing gearbox. However, we figured out a way to tune it and control the power delivery to safe levels so it wouldn't damage anything as we drove it. It will mean that parts of the interior won't look exactly the same as how it would have, but it will run reliably and make all the right sounds. We'll have, to, we'll have to turn it to start it, to get it in, you know what I mean? So... No, I don't think so. It's lining up on that gear. Yeah, more than likely the yeah. yeah so can the we start can we later. turn it? Yeah, yeah. I'll get in and try. I'll get a spanner and see if I can turn it. It's just not wiggling in. Wiggle, wiggle. How's that? Let's go and cut one. Can we judge it anyway? Sixteen. Oh, I've got half a whole like this has got to go. It's got to go across. Like the only thing that could be binding up is on the Bow lends a hand to free up Daz on the forklift. But we've just got to try and get one of these bolts in. It's just when he goes down, I can't hold the weight without it twisting. So he's got to be in here with me to get it in. Oh. Must be, is it sitting on our block now? Oh, it's still too high up. It's up about oh, well, let's take. Can you go up? It's five mil. Rip all those. Yep. Now we're going the other way. Hang on. Just hang on a little bit. Yep, stop there. It's starting to run. Is that in part? Yeah, it can go down there now. Is that in enough? Or my side? Uh, what's name still loose? 
Got it in. Got it in. Hey? Sounds like you're it. Never for a second. It's tricky work, but the boys get it in. It sure takes up a lot of room. Fold it in. Happy days. Fold on. <laughs> Fold Thinking on. about having a swim when I get home. Doesn't look like you need one. Looks like you've already <laughs> jumped already in the pool. In. Jess has a lot more welding work to do on the mounts. So while he was doing that, I followed Daryl around as he started on the turret basket. What we have is the turret basket out of our grant. So we've got to do a little bit of work for it, free up a few things. Uh, first thing we do, we're going to take off this collector ring. This is what maintains the power into the turret from the motors. Are we going to get this working? No, there's no way to make it work, but this is going to interfere with the gearbox we're using. Because uh. we're, we're governed by the height we can get. Yeah. And to get that operating, you really need someone like we don't, I'm not sure we even have the parts that go across from it. The contact? The contact point there for the brushes. And then they'd all be seized solid. You know, they should all flick, flick in and out to maintain contact. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, something for the future maybe. Yeah, so, yeah, well, we'll, yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll look after it as best we can. We won't damage anything more than what it is. Yeah, anything more than we have to. One more to go. I'll just move this damaged tiger wheel out of the way so I can get access better. What's that doing there? Oh, that's going to be a display. We're going to use that as a display in the museum. We've got a lot of other damaged items, so the owners decided to, you know, tidy them up a bit. We'll put a rack on the wall and have them for display. But no, I'll give it a little nudge with a rubber mallet and uh, it might be actually a piece piercing through inside as well. Yeah, I might put a bit of a spray in there and have another go. It's a good sign. Yeah, we've got a, a bundle of wires connected. Can you see that there? Oh, so the braid, yeah. Those wires all be going to these contacts. Panel box channel running here. The, the, the wires be running through here. Down to some junction boxes inside. Yeah. So we'll have to cut them. Well, we will have to cut them. And uh, for what we want, we, we won't be running it. And we, if we do use it, it have to be rewired anyway. Yeah. Righty oh. We'll just get the forklift hooked up and we'll uh, flip him over. What are you going to start on first, Daryl? Well, I'll probably try and get these seats operating. I have to straighten up some of these panels, bend them back up, make sure these are all working, check the hinges. Fire extinguisher bottle there, it looks like it's bent on the top, we'll have to straighten that. See, then we just have to check panel bead around the edges here, so it's ready to go in our turret ring that's over there. Yeah, a bit of work, keep us going for a couple of days. On there. Yeah. 
The uh, in one of our previous posts, someone questioned nylock nuts in a Grant tank. Oh yeah. And uh, it's, I think the Americans had nylock nuts in the late 30s, and that's what they've used. I'm not sure if it was a ni nylon, might be another material. I've heard that they might have had leather in some of them. But just an interesting fact that, you know, people don't realise that how long things have been around. <laughs> oh, Come back in five minutes once the grind has done its magic. Oh. with it to start with. I've, oh, I've, I've put a little mark on here so I can tell if it starts to move if the paint doesn't show up. Well, what, what, I've, what I've just noticed here, and once we've taken this off, we've cleaned it up a bit, it's actually a brass fitting. This is all brass. Brass. Which, I don't know the exact date our vehicle was made, but I think it was 41, 42. At the same time, the Germans were trying to save as much brass as they could. They were making sh um, steel shell cases to save on brass and the Americans you just see that they're the powerhouse of their engineering and their and their supply lines having everything in country you know they can still afford to use brass fittings That's where the paint line was so if we do actually get it to move you'll notice that it will be bare metal rather than the paint so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn it over I'm going to actually hit on the top of the uh, what I'm going to call the tongue yep and we'll see if we can get it to move that way well, I think it's moving. Plenty of movement now. Look at that. You can see it's gone about half inch, 12 mil. Going a bit far. Far up. After some more persuading with the mallet and WD 40, Daryl frees up the seats. Pull that down, it'll fold down, it'll go, go a little bit further, but it's in the vice, it'll lock in place so it can't flip around. And then this part on this step actually, on this seat, actually becomes a step so you can step up higher. We'll climb in and out of the turret. Now onto the floor panels of the turret basket. These need some new hinges. We're using modern pop rivets here, but Daryl will go over these with a spot of car bog and smooth them out to look just like real ones. Once they're painted, you'd never know the difference.
Lions are cracking along with this project. It won't be long till we're ready for our first test drive. It might be a few more weeks before we're ready for another update, as Jesse is taking a couple of weeks off of annual leave, but Daryl will still plod along with some interior details. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one. How does that work? Hold on. That can't go on there. Locks like that, does it? We're looking at it the wrong way. That swings around and locks oh, it like must that. Must do, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> All part of the fun. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really funny. Because I was thinking it locked back the other way. But then that's that's a quick release, so you can get it like dive belts, you know, you can get it, you can pull yeah, the get, get it nice and quick.